I am Xing Tian, Assistant Professor of Neural and Cognitive Sciences at NYU Shanghai. We introduce you our recent study that investigates how our brain processes poems. Poetry is an art form of spoken language. It is universally and deeply rooted in human cultures. Poetic genres and forms are subject to considerable cross-culture, cross-linguistic, and historical variation. The forms of poetry is highly structured, and differs both from everyday speech and from other literary genres. How do we humans comprehend and appreciate poems? What are the neural mechanisms that underlie processing poetic speech? Ancient Chinese poems are uniquely and consistently structured. Here is an example. 白日依山尽，黄河入海流。欲穷千里目，更上一层楼。The example you heard is a famous poetic genre, 绝句 which dates back. To more than 1,500 years ago in ancient China, arguably, Juju is one of the most structured types of poetry. A Juju usually consists of four lines. Each line is made of five or seven monosyllabic words. Despite the regular form of Juju, the phrases in one sentence of Juju are not strictly constrained by grammatical structures. For example. The last word in each of the first two lines is a verb. This violates the subject-verb-object sentence rules in Chinese. Sentences are paired without straight semantic coherence either. For example, first two lines describe nature scenes, whereas the last two lines suddenly describe people climbing a tower. It is challenging for Chinese listeners. To construct structures of unfamiliar juju simply based on semantic scheme and grammatical structures, these special formal and semantical constraints raise an interesting question: How does the structural constraint in poetry aid in conveying poetic meanings and affecting listening experience? Hi, I'm、uh, Sean Binton, a postdoc researcher in Max Planck Institute for Empirical Aesthetics. To study this question, we use a Recurrent neural network model to generate an artificial poem, so that we can have poems that people have never heard of, and we can control the contents of those poems. So we select eighty thousand poems written in five dynasties in ancient China, and then we feed those poems into the neural network model. The neural network model learns the representations of individual syllables and the relationship between different poetic lines. After we trained the model, we provide some keywords. The model took the keywords and expanded those keywords into phrases and generated the first poetic line. Then the rest of lines are generated based on the first poetic line. So remember, the artificial poems generated have the same structure constraint as the real poems. We focus on how the structure constraint of the poem affects speech segmentation. So we use a speech synthesizer to generate speech sounds. 分分竹水流河是最多愁不是无人会春风第一流 By doing this, so we remove some acoustic cues such as pauses, intonation, and prosodic cues. Those cues can indicate poetic structures. People or listeners have to rely on their prior knowledge of structural cues to pass speech streams. We present those、um, poem stimuli to native Chinese speaker and record their neural responses using magnetoencephalography (MEG). In the, their neural responses, we found signal components of several、uh, time scales: 3.33 hertz, corresponding to the、uh, syllable rate in the speech stimuli, and we found other two components which do not exist in speech stimuli. The neural component around 0.67 hertz aligns with the line rate of the poem stimuli. So this suggests that the listeners know there are four lines, and then actively segment the speech streams 
into line structures according to their prior knowledge of the poem structures. And we found another component, um, which is around 0.24 Hz. These frequency components aligns with the conceptual organization of the poem, Zhejiu, which is Qi, Chen, Zhuan, He. What is even more interesting is that so we found a fifth procession phenomenon in speech perception. So when listeners listen to the poem for the second time, their neural phase around 0.67 Hz, corresponding to a line rate, advanced faster than the first time. The phase procession suggests that listeners use their prior knowledge of the poem structure and make predictions for the incoming speech structure. They can predict the structure boundary of poems and then segment the speech stream. In conclusion, listeners can parse speech streams by using not only grammatical and statistical cues, but also their prior knowledge of the form of language. The constrained poetic structures serve as a temporal mental map for listeners to actively group speech contents and to predict incoming speech signals. Our study suggests that people can group speech contents flexibly using various cues. This opens a new research direction on understanding how we perceive and how we induce aesthetic experience. For example, future study can explore how structure and formality of different literature genres affect speech grouping and speech comprehension using the paradigm in our study. It is also possible that to learn a formal structure of a language, in addition to vocabulary and syntax, is crucial for language acquisition. The phase precession we found could be a robust neural signature for studying prediction in speech perception, especially during continuous speech listening. In future studies, it will be interesting to know which brain areas are involved in inducing such phase precession phenomena, and how the phase precession in speech perception is related to phase precession phenomena observed in the hippocampal formation.